السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ماشاء اللہ فار دوز آف دا برادرز الحمد للہ بن فالوئنگ دی پوسٹ دیٹ آئی بن میکنگ آف لائٹ دس از آرٹیکل میڈ ان دی انڈیپینڈنٹ آن دا تھرٹی فسٹ آف آگسٹ ناؤ واٹس انٹرسٹنگ اباؤٹ دس پرٹیکولر آرٹیکل از دیٹ دے ڈسکس واٹ از کالڈ واٹ the at least uh, the fraternity in the astronomy world refer to it as planet nine <clears throat> now uh, this is again the whole technique of smoke and mirrors as far as I understand very specifically there's a star and that star has got other celestial bodies uh, whether though there would be satellites in terms of moons when I say satellites or planetary bodies and other comet debris asteroids at any rate um, uh, basically this whole smoke and mirror technique where they call it planet 9 planet 7 planet x they call it um, uh, the dwarf star they call it the uh, red and blue kachina they call it um, the herculobus they call it uh, there's all sorts of names it goes by and um, what I've what I've noticed is um, uh, a pattern Um, emerging out of all of that and um, uh, using using all the research that's been done so far and um, uh, 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 all, all the information that surfaces you know with uh, with a keen eye you can ascertain where there are half truths <clears throat> some of the information corroborates with the research that you're doing on the ground and then some of it is almost meant to kind of then derail you again and I think these are these are very like um, <coughs> deliberate articles uh, where they basically uh, give lace the article with a lot of disinformation you know and uh, again that's just another pattern done by these sort of psyops uh, in this one what's interesting about it and what struck me is I mean they, they, they will discuss stuff like um, uh, end of times a planet Uh, colliding with the earth and um, destroying everything and uh, life as we know it and they'll play this whole ap apocalyptic kind of card um, uh, in in light of Quran and Sunnah and the ulama know best but the little understanding I have is that we'll see disasters uh, there's no actual um, reference made to what will be the asbab of that but if we take uh, comparative religious studies then uh, historical <coughs> um, uh, documentation by different nations and uh, different regions and different uh, tribes and different religious beliefs systems uh, that have been documented um, throughout the four corners of the globe and you take all of that and then summarize it in light of all of that then you can see some sort of a pattern surfacing Right, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, I mean it could be entirely inaccurate. But um, I, I was more compelled to do this right now, and I'll explain to you why I had a... I'm not, you know, I've always mentioned I have dreams, I've never mentioned any details of it, but I just, I know in my gut, you know, like I said, the only thing that I would put in front of my sentence is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but in my gut, Um, my dreams since I've been having them <clears throat> and this is like when I was the first one I had was whilst I was in well whilst I was away and um, um, it was a very peculiar dream in the sense that I mean it was substantially more vivid than the sort of dreams that we have usually But what was very unique about this dream is the way it starts and the way it ends. I won't elaborate on exactly how my dreams start and how they end, but when they have that same pattern, I instinctively know that this is something I've got to take no notice of. Right? It's it's something. There's something there. It's not just um, you know, um, a dream. You know, I mean, there's. Th types of dreams one is obviously one that's conjured up by your own thoughts 
right? And um, your own, maybe even fears or desires. Uh, the other one is from Shaitan Lanatullah, and the other one is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And usually, I've kind of become adept at knowing, and even the times of the days when you have it, if you were, you know, uh, depending on what time of the day you were sleeping, um, uh, you'll know. Uh, you can uh, just through process of elimination, you'll know exactly what that dream was or where it was coming from, and what have you and alhamdulillah uh, you know I, I, I take since then i've taken a lot of interest in dreams and been studying dreams and um reading uh, on uh, the books our ulama have written on dreams you know this is a long time ago it's just another hobby i guess you know mashallah i really find it fascinating just as much as i do the skies and the solar system and everything that's beyond that you know, I find dreams just as uh, an interesting topic, subhanAllah. That's a very ajeeb topic. It blows me away, mashallah. And uh, what's happened is since then, I've kind of, um, mashallah, uh, it's, it's, anyway, it, let's focus on the dream, you know, mashallah. So the dream I had on the day of Arafat, again, it's the same kind of thread where it starts the way, same way and it ends the same way and what happened in the dream, I'll tell you what the dream was and not how it starts or ends but um, in the dream of very clearly and I've seen, you know, I've seen planetary bodies in the sky, I've seen suns you know, as in stars as in a star next to our sun and uh, that's basically what drew me to it initially I thought that was a dream of my son uh, being referred to and for a little while I did uh, then I thought it was something else, you know, because uh, I mean, I did try to get it interpreted, but Alhamdulillah, you know, our elders, mashallah, they're very, you know, they, 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 they've got their hands full, you know, subhanAllah, so trying to basically get in front of them and, um, you know, and really, uh, I'm, uh, obviously, who am I anyway, subhanAllah, so, you know, I guess it's just I've kept it like that, but the dreams get, subhanAllah, much more, like, there's no, the, it's they're not basically um stopping you know they just they continue i mean i'm not saying they're very frequent but they're constant and the the pattern is constant you know and it's a very very unique one you know subhanallah so very unique so it's not just like a random dream that you're having you know even the way not just a dream itself and what you see in the dream but how it starts how it ends you know it's very very unique you know, subhanAllah. Anyway, the one I had today specifically, and this is what this is about, is I saw a blue... And I'm going out on a limb here, you know, subhanAllah, because, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I know for the most part they'll be taken as, you know, the, the brothers kind of basically um, are not with us anymore, you know, obviously he's, <laughs> subhanAllah, moved on to the darker side, as it were, you know, he's kind of lost his marbles. Um, but I have to put it out there, you know, because I know that it's coming from somewhere else. So, I mean, what do I do in the face of that when I firmly believe that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, I don't, I, what do I do? You know, do I just, like, um, sweep it under the carpet? I don't think anyone else would. Um, and um, in the same situation, I'm pretty sure that they'd be, like, shouting on the top of their head. You know, and it's it's what I'm trying to do, but I'm trying to basically, you know, formulate what I've been experiencing um, and articulate it, uh, not just through expressions of, you know, words of what I'm dreaming, but rather scientifically, everything that I put forward in front of everyone so far has been factual and data and scientific stuff. I've never, ever, ever, ever... Uh, described any one of my dreams yet, you know, although those dreams have been like the, I guess, uh, driving force, you know, what gives me the momentum and has kept me on this, uh, uh, this particular subject matter for uh, quite a while now. And it's revealed other things along the way, subhanAllah, you know, it started from this son and, and like I said, I thought it was my, uh, I thought in my dream I was seeing my son next to me. Yeah, and then I saw another uh, planetary body in the distance which was being covered by the clouds and I was thinking that these were like my children and one was kept, one was at a distance, 
or the other one was next to me, right? Then later on what happens is, so many, uh, a few years down the line, whilst I was already interested in this phenomena, you know, uh, and I study, you know, ancient uh, uh, religious studies is something that, I, you know, I find very interesting, uh, history, uh, comparative religious studies, and then there's obviously the mystery religions as well. And um, what, what, what happened was I saw an image which was reminiscent of what I had dreamt. And it was instinctively, it was instant, you know, I knew straight away that what I saw in my dream was this. It wasn't, it didn't mean anything else. It was, the reference was here. So this obviously piqued my interest and I was, I mean, you can imagine how curious I was as a result because, I mean, what I dreamt was what I was seeing now in an image, right, a few years later. Now, I wrote to a sheikh about it and he asked me at the time, actually, he told me to go to, so he wasn't proficient in interpreting dreams. So he told me to go to someone who was and I knew that Hazrat, you know, Yusuf Mu'tala is basically proficient, but then I think I wrote it in a letter and sent it. Um, uh, via someone, I'm not sure whether, you know, there was many, you know, SubhanAllah, I think he was probably overwhelmed by it as well. I never got a response and I, I'm, I'm not taking anything from Hazraji, you know, I understand, I can only imagine, you know, how many letters he gets or what, and maybe something was lost in translation, maybe he did respond to me, maybe I didn't get that response for whatever reason, and it's all with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, and who am I to say any different in the face of that? You know, it's, it, it, it only unfolds the way Allah SWT has decreed. So whatever the reasons may be, I did, you know, uh, summarize it and write it in a letter. And uh, at least I think I did. You know, Allahu Alam. See, I mean, now it's become vague for me. But what I did was I wrote to one sheikh and he told me he wasn't proficient. And there was a lot of dreams in there. Maybe at that time I must have pointed out around about 10, 13 odd dreams uh, which had this dis distinctive pattern to it and uh, I sent it alhamdulillah anyway at any rate and so then because obviously I couldn't really get a response to them I, I started going on this journey on my own and um, uh, you know just seeing where it was taking me so I was almost just at the mercy of these dreams and you know the direction that I was taking as a result now, what you see, in, uh, interestingly, about this article in The Independent is um, on the 30th of August, is that they mention, and this really concerned me, so this is why today I'm actually talking about the dream, right? And the dream I had was on the day of Arafah, and again, it had the same pattern, and in that dream, what I saw was a very bright star, a very, very bright star, almost like um, it was, you know when uh, you see those bright, really bright uh, bulbs, um, uh, like the halogen bulbs, right? And if you look at the halogen light, it was that sort of brightness, it was just ajeeb how bright it was. And what it had tailing it is a red and a blue planet. Now if you go back to the Hopi prophecies, they actually mention a planet called the red and blue Kachina, which I've actually mentioned in my PDF in um, uh, early Ramadan that I uploaded along with other descriptions given to this particular binary system that enters our our, our solar system. Um, so anyway what concerned me was this article and that led me to basically I'm um, talking about what I'm talking about at the moment you know uh, and over here it says our solar system could be unexpectedly destroyed when the Sun dies that's the little that's a sentence that really just um, put me on the back footing. When the sun dies because of a mysterious planet hovering at its edge. See, what they do is they give some information, some truths, and they don't do others. Now, you'll see that through in the three days of darkness. Now, honestly, help me out here, guys, because, you know, I, ulama, please, you know, help me out here. You know, am I making these things up? Because you, uh, in the, 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 the three days of darkness, part one, part two, part three, part four, and everything that I've uploaded beyond that, I've made reference to the fact that the SDO satellite on Helio Viewer is showing that the sun is losing its light. And then you've got these guys, uh, independent, putting a, um, an uh, article out, and in that they mention, could be unexpe could unexpectedly destroyed, unexpectedly destroyed when the sun dies. 
right? Now, that's not the case. I mean, as far as we understand, we will have three days of darkness. But they're mentioning that the star that comes in, a planet nine, they call in it. And that's where they basically do, they put in a bit of disinformation to derail you. When, in fact, what they mean for all intents and purposes, planet nine is this star. Right? I want you to know that. I want you to understand that, that it's this, it's this star. Let them call it whatever they want. It's this star and its planetary bodies, all the celestial bodies that are following it. But planet nine, Herculobus, anything you want to call it, it's this star. It's this bright star that I saw in my dream. That's exactly what they're referring to. And that star, we understand it to be from the scientific data uh, uh, and the SDO satellite, okay, uh, for NASA, which is on helioviewer.org, is next to our sun at the moment. Hence why they're using a solar sun simulator to A, simulate our sun and to B, cloak it. Why do they want to cloak it? Because this star is next to it and it's draining our star, our sun, sorry, of its energy. Right when it drains it completely, that's when our sun will stop tugging on the magnetic grip that this our sun has. This is science now, where the sun has a magnetic grip on this other star. It's holding on to it, right? So this other star is draining our sun of its energy. When our sun basically goes dark, right? That's when its magnetic pull and force which is holding on to this star which has come into from its trajectory into our solar system that star will then shoot back out this is what science says right that show a star will shoot back out when it shoots back out it's going to it's going to be in a trajectory out but it's going to be heading towards us along with its planetary bodies and any sort of meteorite and tail that it's got asteroid tail that it has when it does that that's when i'm hypothesizing and i have in the pdf that we will see the three, uh, A will see the three days of darkness because the sun will lose its energy, but it'll jump start again because Hadith tells us it will. So, I mean, that's simple, khalas, you know, it ends there, that our sun will start to uh, shine again. Inshallah, it will happen after the three days or whatever it is that uh, Hadith will uh, elucidate on, that duration. Uh, then this star, as it comes close to us, don't forget it's got its own magnetic pole. You can imagine what it's done to, this, uh, to the sun during its passage, how it's drained it of its energy. And stars do this, binary stars do that with each other. It's science, uh, 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 astrophysics, you just got to look it up and you'll find that there's many binary stars in our solar system, in our, sorry, uh, universe. And um, around 60 to 70% of them are binary. So there's no reason to believe why our solar system won't be binary as well, especially whilst we've got a mention of a star uh, in the Quran as a night visitor, uh, which will come uh, just like a, a visitor uh, uh, in the night, right? Night visiting. So it's going to be literally, it's going to catapult itself once that hold from the sun, the grip, the magnetic grip is gone. And when does that go? I hypothesize is when the sun becomes dark, right? Because all its energy has been drained by this other star. That's when the, our sun will let go of its grip because it won't be able to hold on to it anymore because it's not, uh, um, uh, uh, it's been drained of its energy. And this star then will catapult back out into its trajectory. And as it does that, it'll come towards us. This is when I'm expecting, scientifically at least, that due to this other star's proximity to us as it's passing past, going past on its trajectory, it's going to cause the earth, the landslides that the Prophet has prophesied, the three great landslides in the east, the west, and the Arabian Peninsula. Okay, now during its passage, I genuinely believe, and this is what research tells me, that these guys want to make sure that they use this opportunity, and the plan always has been, you know, about this star. They've been scheming around this star. And what's interesting is that in the same thread of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, first he mentions, you know, uh, the star, there's mention about, you know, the wahdaniyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's mention about the risala of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the other anbiya that have come, and the message that they brought, the nations that were destroyed through natural disasters are mentioned in the same thread, which is interesting because the, the Jews believe in the Torah that a star was a cause of floods, right? Uh, and we take anything said in the Torah as 50-50, uh, it could be true or it may not be. So, I mean, again, there's something there to look at, you know, subhanAllah. Uh, uh, we can't discount that altogether. And uh, then 
um, what I believe is these guys are uh, scheming and what they're uh, oh, sorry and in the same surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa makaru wa makaru Allah wallahu khayru al-makiru you know that they they, um, they plan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also plans and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of plans you know and as far as I understand their plan is to stage an, uh, the world war three the economic collapse and the extraterrestrial contact, a false one, a false extraterrestrial contact using military technology, holographic technology and other technologies. It's a lot to take in, it's a lot to digest, it's a lot to you know um, uh, get one's head round but this is basically where I stand and I'm very you know uh, firm on this you know, because it's, 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 it's something I firmly believe, you know, in my heart. And this is just going through, like I said, you know, the, like, the weight of my dreams. And what I've discovered so far, uh, just basically the two just are like, you know, it's like one's guiding towards the other. Now, I've put forward my sense, uh, this, uh, the science uh, behind it, you know, uh, uh, all of these claims. And then other pieces of evidences as well and data. Um, it's just I, I, I can only uh, th th that's all I can do you know I'm going to leave it with the ulama you know there's, uh, there's a little recording that I sent about two months ago when an alim mashallah asked me that what should we do Abdul Latif in the face of this right what, what the claims that you're making and I'm going to just, just sorry guys but I'm just going to I think it's appropriate that you know you, you, you basically um, um, hear it so at least it makes sense uh, what I'm trying to get at. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mashallah, they need to study. I mean, uh, I guess I've been researching the topic for a number of years, a lot of years. Mashallah, and that's discounting um, the dreams that I've had along the way. Um, I'm not going to basically um, dwell on that, but. The research, that stuff that's tangible, it's real evidence, it's stuff that can be um, uh, verified and then maybe perhaps, you know, um, mashallah, um, even get its observable evidence so they can basically see for themselves whether this is the case. But see, there's the questions that need to be asked because all of it has, you can connect the dots, you know, the frequency of earthquakes since like 1982. Uh, to current day, present day, um, the earthquakes have gone up in frequency to 10,000%. Now Islam says that as Guna increase, uh, so will the um, the earthquakes in frequency. But what isn't clear, at least this is my understanding, is what the asbab will be. And there's no reason to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't utilize an asbab in order to increase those earthquakes. Yeah? But see, there's obviously the um, uh, the vortices in the uh, north and the south pole. For the first time, you probably noticed that you know it's observable. But then go and see the science behind it as well. Mashallah. There's a chap called Paul Beckwith. He's from the University of um, Ottawa. Uh, he's a professor there. He's a professional, and he's done an excellent um, presentation on it. And he's really concerned as well about it as well because he's been studying this topic as in. He, he's an expert at the vortices and climate. Um, he's a climate geologist, I guess, and um, he's an expert and he's expressed serious concerns. If you watch his video, trust me, it certainly doesn't make riveting uh, viewing, yet he's had plus close to 400,000 views in about a couple of weeks. So you know that people uh, or academics from academia have been watching it because, like I said, it's not riveting viewing, so it's not just the average old blog who's been watching it. And in it, he explains how he's really concerned about uh, the vortices mixing with the equator for the first time. Then the reef, again, you know, um, the, uh, the waters, uh, they're mixing. The poles have shifted by 20 degrees, the sun setting 20 degrees off from the north, subhanAllah, the north star in the sky, guess what, that's moved a few degrees, three to four degrees, obviously it's a distance, so the degrees are less, uh, relatively speaking, because it's so far away, but subhanAllah, what's happened, the earth obviously has tilted, at the moment, the excuse the mainstream media, where they've had to give it, they've basically said that, um, um, 
it's been caused by the ice melting. Well, that's absolutely silly because I've already explained that, that the water on the surface of the Earth um, in terms of mass is nothing compared to the crust, the mantle, the, uh, the lava, the core, all of that. It just the crust itself is far more um, con uh, in terms of um, uh, matter. It's far more substantial than what uh, the water on the surface of the Earth weighs. So, I mean, it couldn't. If all the ice melted, it still couldn't shift the poles, you know, from north to south. They've moved by 20 degrees. There's another influence from out there that's actually doing that. But it's on the weather, do a lot. Pakistani and that's in the air. Heat waves, record, record heat waves. Saudi and the snow, but you know, floods, yeah. Floods you've not even heard about. And look it up. This is all, uh, you know, stuff you can check. And this is this happened. And this has happened this year. China and the under floods share crazy floods, right? In India, a bit recently, a week ago, two, bil two million people have been uh, displaced because of the floods over there, and so many have died, 90, 100, Allahu Alam. But where are the floods happening from? Paris, for the first time, record history and the floods share. Uh, Germany and the under share. I'm expecting it to happen in the UK soon as well. So, you know. There's a total imbalance, you know, uh, like I've already mentioned, you know, even like the water mammals and the fish, the whales, the sea lions, uh, uh, killer whales, you know, uh, crabs, so on a lot, even like shrimps, uh, sardines, you know, ajib, you know, in wholesale, like um, numbers, uh, washing up dead uh, on the beaches uh, 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 across the globe, you know, so Anala, again this year, but see, this year you've got meteorites coming in uh, into our thing, atmosphere on a record level. You know, what you don't see in um, four months uh, has happened in one day, you know, even like Senate American uh, Meteorology, uh, it's uh, observers, they basically like sounded trumpets and alarm bells about this, that what's going on, where they're coming from. You know, there's my obviously what I'm postulating is there's another celestial body that's coming in uh, from a uh, um, uh, elliptical orbit uh, into our solar system, and it's dragging all these other space debris into our solar system, which is then flung in, in our direction. Jupiter and the and the the um, uh, like you know they, they've just had this uh, massive meteorite basically fall on it and the explosion was the size of earth uh, if this happened this year you know where did that meteorite come from then you've got up uh, um, uh, uh, Venus it's had a massive flare just a few days ago seen on the core satellite um, photography what's causing that you know so how long this has never happened then you've got Mars again you know it was having flares itself you know uh, uh, recently what's causing that impact on Mars you know, these are planets who are getting perturbations on in our solar system. What's causing it? There's another outside influence that's causing it. But you look at the halo right now. If you look at the halo behind the sun, subhanAllah, they're saying that you know, the ice crystals are causing it in our atmosphere. But guess what? When you look at the images from ISS uh, satellite, right, through NASA, then you know, in space, the halo is still there. There are no ice crystals in space. There's a vacuum there, subhanAllah, you know, there's no atmosphere in space. So why is there a halo uh, around the sun uh, as well? That's been projected, as far as I'm concerned, into our atmosphere. So we're seeing it over here, right? And whatever's in space, we're seeing over here in our atmosphere. So that's why I recorded it in the Duke. You know, the halo was there. Now, the theory is, one of the theories at least, and I think it's... Um, uh, a, a reasonable one is to suggest that there's something very dense behind the sun and that's basically um, uh, bending the light so hence uh, we're seeing uh, the halo around the sun so what's so dense you know it's going to be a massive uh, it's going to be a substantial uh, object a celestial body and that can bend the light around the sun subhanallah and that's something you know uh, if you look it up you know you'll find an explanation for that they call it the gravitational lens so that's something that needs reading now as far as the fish in the sea subhanallah you know there's um they're saying that from the cold the earth's bed uh, um, methane is uh, basically being um 
from the surface, uh, from the ground, poisonous methane gas is coming out. And that is basically um, uh, suffocating the sea mammals and fishes from oxygen, and they're turning up on our beaches uh, dead. But the birds all over the world, they're not in flocks, are just falling from the sky dead, not making the news again, interestingly enough, right? SubhanAllah. You know, uh, look this up. I'm not just making any of this up. Everything I've mentioned so far, uh, score a line underneath it and then study it and research it and find out. And all I'm asking you to do, you don't have to go too far back. Just look at all the events that have happened within 2016 relating them, yeah, which is the earthquakes again around the ring of fire. But you've got this military drill that's just recently happened. Biggest ever military drill done in the history of the United States of America, right? It's totally kept hushed, didn't make the media whatsoever. Look, honestly, genuinely, I'm not being a sensationalist. You know, I've been bored to this. You know, it's something I really want to shrug off. I don't, I just want to know that some ulama are looking into it, and then that's it, man. I've done my bit. I can sleep at night, subhanAllah, you know, and I'm on the job, and I didn't draw attention. I don't really genuinely, I don't know how it's, I don't want anything to do with it, you know? I want someone else to basically start looking into it, and if there is hakika to it, then my finger estimates are that this is the very same star being referred to, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But look, there's text out there, right? SubhanAllah, the Chinese call it the guest star, right? And look it up again, this is score a line underneath this, right? Chinese, ancient Chinese text, and the little guest star, and we understand that's an hair. There's more than 124,000 uh, 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 prophets who have come. Right to different nations and tribes. Who's to say that Senhar, the Chinese, ancient Chinese, didn't have uh, a, a prophet who came to them and uh, left this uh, piece of knowledge with them? Because it's in their documents, right? historical documents. And guess what they call the star, right? And this star is basically a, uh, the Chinese call it the guest star, Ajib. Yeah, because we've got a star in the Quran that's mentioned in the night visitor, the visitant. What's the difference between a visitor and a guest star? They both mean the exact same thing. You know, very interesting correlation and um, uh, uh, similarities between the two stars, subhanAllah. And they estimate that in the head, this star is going to cause a lot of destruction, right? Allah SWT swears by it, and not in the Quran, not only that, Allah SWT mentions other nations, all those nations were killed by natural disasters, subhanAllah, well at least, uh, you know, they were finished off uh, by natural disasters, right, and you see the very same sort of natural disasters occurring in the world on smaller levels right now, floods, earthquakes, sinkholes, clay stones falling from the sky, which meteorites of course, right, uh, so it droughts, you know, uh, landslides, uh, subhanAllah, you know, even like volcanoes going off, that's again the smoke, Allah you know, Allah knows best, and then you've got to guess what the Jews in the Torah, guess what they say, and we don't basically discount the Torah Islamically, our position is that's an head Torah and the Jewila Kiluhai, so we can't basically discount it as um, uh, truths or untruths, we basically take the middle road, so we don't accept it as an absolute neither, but guess what the Torah says? That's an in the time of Noah alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the floods by moving a star in the heaven. Now isn't that interesting? That a star in the heaven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved it, and that, at least as far as the Torah is concerned, that's what they say. You know, we've got to look into these, um, yeah, there's, there's certainly some sort of dots to be connected over here. But you look at the, uh, the and they basically believe that the star of Jacob will come, and when that comes, the Messiah will come. We understand that to be the Jalla and the Bali. But, you know, subhanAllah, you know, you look at the Christians, they believe in a star called the Wormwood. And again, they believe that an Isa Islam will return when that happens. Again, my position is that there would be the Jal and, you know, the Shaitanical are basically staging this whole event. You know, any of the natural disasters to her, they don't want people to prepare. Hudusa Sama has mentioned that in her there's going to be three major landslides, right? SubhanAllah, in the east, the west, and the Arabian Peninsula. I'm postulating that this star doesn't really exist. It has got other celestial bodies that it's dragging along with it, just like many of the stars that have been observed in our universe and galaxy. They all have it just like our sun does. SubhanAllah, we're part of it. We're part of the celestial bodies that are orbiting our sun. And this is a star which functions just like our son does, subhanAllah, right? If it flips our poles and then I do, imagine 
Yeah, there's Hadis, you know, uh, uh, which say that uh, the Arabian Peninsula will become green. Well, guess what? If it flips the poles, then the Arabian Peninsula is not, not going to be on the equator anymore. SubhanAllah. So it may enjoy a different climate altogether, which could cause the Arabian Peninsula to become green. There's so many things that this particular, if it does exist in theory, a celestial body, a star, right? If it went past, then yes, certainly if it's a star, it will have a magnetic effect on our poles, it will disturb, it will really upset the earth, it will cause landslides, it will cause earthquakes, it will cause floods, it will cause storms, you know, and all of these are increasing this year. So there's a lot of evidence suggesting that it's happening out there. Jupiter new Pope is in there, just like the northern lights. Something really absolutely spectacular happened on Jupiter. What's causing that? You know, it's never happened. They've never observed it in uh, a modern um, recorded history, right? They've not seen that, but it's only the lens flares that are happening from the sun. Something's upsetting it, right? Now, you've got to be, it's got to be something really major to upset the sun. The sun, for, for, for you know, once it, well, it never recorded in history, but the surface of the corona has been revealed. You know, that's like, wow, you know, it's not happened before. You know, so there is this, there's a lot. I can go on honestly, seriously. But the only man need to look into it. It's an every southern hemisphere in the end. It's an every dinosaur. Okay, you've seen this star, right? Many people have seen it. And they've seen it on government cameras. They've seen it on sky cams. They're observing it themselves, right? There's too much evidence out there showing a star. But not just a star. They're showing other heavenly bodies. And apparently the star is basically rotating in the opposite direction. Up a clock. Why anti-clockwise uh, we orbit our sun? Well, apparently this particular star and its orbitals are going um, clockwise, right, in the opposite direction. So remember, when two actual bodies basically are going, moving and moving in the opposite direction, then the speed is much more faster, subhanAllah, right? So these other planets that are basically, if there are, and in theory I'm saying there are, um, basically orbiting this particular star, uh, uh, do exist, then these other uh, orbital uh, uh, planets basically are the same ones that have been seen right now. Uh, this might sound absolutely far-fetched, but honestly, I've seen too much evidence to suggest that it is the case. Where well, there's a red one, there's a blue one, and I'm not even mentioning my dreams here, honestly, genuinely. I'm um, like, talking about like uh, these... Uh, photography has caught uh, and continues to catch and even video cameras are catching it right Mexican uh, webcams we have so provided links to it where you can see it and you can actually go to this government um, um, uh, sponsored um, uh, 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 organizations and their cameras right which are picking it up and people are they're open to the public so the public can see it as well so Hanula, right and they're not aware it's picking it up you know and um, they're picking up like uh, a red planet a green one a blue one a purple one a multicolored one and a beige one and then the star as well so Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best you know but there's certainly mention of a star in the Quran Allah knows best you know with, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by it you know, so, I mean, you know, the, it, there's a possibility, all I'm saying, and I really don't want to create any sort of panic, right, is that um, potentially this can cause some serious natural disasters. And then I think the Shaitani class have got other, they're scheming in the same, uh, 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 at the same time. And interesting enough, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the same passage, says, Obviously, they're scheming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also plans, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Interesting, and I don't think there's any coincidence that the same mention of that ayat is in the passage of the same uh, chapter about the star. So, you know, and my, I'm postulating that they're basically trying to stage an extraterrestrial contact. Again, it's getting more and more wild, isn't it? So, I'm not, no, seriously, I'm not losing my mind. This is the evidence, you know, and I'm genuinely taking fact, hard evidence, right? And I'm looking at that. It's not just airy fairy theories, you know, that there, you know, there's conspiracy theories out there. I'm looking at them. No, so I'm, I'm a serious researcher. I look at real evidence. I'm written on the lot of the The um, Vatican have come out and said, we've got space brothers out there, and they would christen them. You know, so I mean, please scroll line under what I've just said right now and look it up. That's the case. Then the United Nations have basically appointed an ambassador to deal with uh, uh, aliens, 
right? To communicate with them. You know, basically, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's one way of doing away with religious belief. You know, because my theory is that they basically claim, and the Jal, when Ilana uh, does show his face, will claim that he's come, he has extraterrestrial origins, and they were the very same. You know, uh, people who created uh, insan, you know, from the Homo erectus by hybridizing them with their own DNA, uh, with uh, the DNA of Homo erectus. I mean, these are things that you want to look into because genuinely, media is going that way. Um, you look at um, academia, you know, people at the top, and we know who they all sleep in bed with. You know, they're basically pushing this whole evolution and everything else as well, right? Uh, there's just too much going on, honestly, genuinely. And that's what Allah knows best, right? But um, it, 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 the, the, what I'm saying is it requires looking into, and if there is, is a case, and genuinely, if there's a start, and look, it's only going to take a little bit of their time, right? But when I, if genuinely, if there is a start out there, Right, which is coming, and all of these natural disasters and this very, very um, strange uh, weather pattern that's happening world over and being witnessed, and you know anyone uh, else who will obviously, um, I'm sure, agree that they, yeah, they've certainly noticed that. You know, all of these weather patterns out there. You know, we need to look into it whether it's being caused by something. You know, worst case scenario, and inshallah, I'm not right. Right, I'm totally wrong, and alhamdulillah, things carry on as usual, mashallah. But um, on the other, on the flip side, I, I may be right, and if I'm right, then subhanallah, you know, this we, we need to basically, the human needs to know so that we can be in a better position to prepare for this eventuality because they're not going to tell us. And if it does happen and if it's real and these landslides happen, then the world economy will come to a grinding halt. Uh, food will become scarce, right? There will be like um, uh, panic everywhere. Right? There will be a lot of lives lost, subhanAllah. So, I mean, you know, anyone living near this coastline, they should move further inland, subhanAllah, just in case these landslides do happen, right? It will be the coast to go first, just like America is anticipating, and this is why they've done this military drill, right, of um, uh, Arcadia Rising, uh, or Cascadia Rising, subhanAllah. So, you know, I mean, they're not only for no reason, they spent billions of dollars on that, and they've kept it harsh, yeah? So, I mean, honestly, that is a lot. You know, I provided a document in your book, but that leaks me here. All I'm asking them to do is just go through it slowly. You know, mashallah, look into it. Is there any leverage there? You know, who uh, am I just someone with an overactive imagination? You know, Allah subhanahu wa time will tell. You know, but genuinely, I'm very sincere. I'm very, you know, concerned. You know, again, you know, I'm just putting my dreams on the side. You know, I'm not focusing on them. Uh, even this morning I woke up with them, but that's, I'm not genuinely trying to keep that away and separate from trying to look into this. But I think through that, mashallah, I've been driven to this, you know, and uh, hence why, obviously, you know, I'd say it's, I've been putting things together and I've done a lot of the work for them, the homework for them. All they got to do is look at that and then uh, verify it and see whether those claims are indeed true or not. Allah SWT knows best, but, you know, um, they're scheming. If they are, and then we need to obviously, um, you know, we need to tap into our philosophy. You know, um, we're, we're believers, you know, mashallah, and we need to be in tune with um, what the earth is saying. We've got to listen, and subhanAllah, you know, it's not one of them things. I mean, Bahad Muko, and listen, you see that there's something not right, right? And, um, you know, we just have to basically you know, get in tune with our fitra and just try to basically make sense out of what's going on. Uh, I mean, you know, honestly, it's just, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say, put it. You know, all I want knows best. You know, all I'm asking is they take a look at it and then one person turns around. I mean, I brought it to attention a lot of people. Mullah Mahmoud Janya Tseya Dhamud Barakatum. Mullah Yunus Dudwala Tseya Dhamud Barakatum in London. Mullah Sheikh Ul Hadith Bilal Bawa Tseya Dhamud Barakatum. Pachi Sena Hai Mufti Kamaluddin Dhamud Barakatum. Pachi Apre Allah Niki Deto Sena Hai Sheikh Ar Salaam Dhamud Barakatum. Pachi Sena Hai Mullah Kari Farooq Dhamud Barakatum. Ustad Saji Sufi Dhamud Barakatum. You know, Darul uh, Devan Subhanallah, who then basically gave me the details to a uh, another uh, alim, 
uh, they basically I think they've escalated the matter mashallah alhamdulillah Thumma, alhamdulillah and hopefully they're looking into it that's what they told me they are doing Allah knows best they gave me the details I sent what I had basically on this particular topic over uh, they then sent, got, got in contact with me escalated it my own doubt and said I can't his name's not coming to me it's somewhere in the back of my mind but Janahem my name Nadi Tesmo Kadam my name Okla I put you know and those are the I think Alims that I've sent it to I just you know hope inshallah Allah, that someone is genuinely basing me give me a bit of time uh, and you know if I'm right then subhanallah it's going to be the biggest service ever done to the you know at least in our time because uh, it can help us basically um prepare in anticipation of something that's going to basically take uh, millions of lives and we've been told that in, uh, you know uh, through the malhamah uh, the world war uh, the great war the, through natural disasters through famine and through disease two-thirds of the world's population are going to die i think we're basically on the precipice of this we're on the cusp of it and the disaster mentioned I think it's going to be through the means of the star and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most best. So, you know, if we as Muslims can get a, get a, a head start, be a bit more organized, you know, subhanAllah, and um, anticipate a, a, a disaster and maybe, you know, mashallah, you know, um, do some level of damage limitation, you know, mashallah, for you, subhanAllah, you know, this is what Muslim uh, Islam is all about. Uh, you really hope I'm wrong, you know, inshallah, by Nicole. But this is how I feel about it. Uh, sorry, huh? No, <laughs> so let's have to get it out. This is a good note. What's so much as that? Okay, that's, that was a recording I sent out to a local island, mashallah, a few months ago. Anyway, so um, uh, I guess, yeah, just like I finished off there in that little. Um, audio voice recording is that you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Jazakallahu khayn wa asana jazak for listening and your time. Um, it's you know, uh, Eid Mubarak to everyone, you know, subhanallah, it's Eid today. Um, the dream I had yesterday, and you know, again, you know, you can imagine, you know, it, uh, for me, it's as real as everything else is around me, you know. Uh, uh, so um, for me, I was compelled to kind of uh, do this post and share this today. So, um, mashallah, happy Eid, you know, and um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, guide, bless the Ummah um, and uh, protect the Iman of the Muslim Ummah. You know, um, seems like some great fitting on the horizon and they're literally around the corner um, I'm not going to put any time scales I, I wouldn't dare but if I was asked about my gut intuition you know then I would say that um, uh, this particular system is by the end of the year we're going to get to see it in our skies and uh, the dream that I had yesterday in that I vividly saw a very bright star and uh, a red and a blue um, celestial body tagging along with it. Uh, next, as far as I know, if it ha when it happens, and if it happens, then people's people will be staring at this sky. You know, literally, um, our necks will become stiff just looking at it. It's going to be quite a. Uh, a phenomenal sight to behold and um, we need to instantly just make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know uh, realign ourselves to our deen you know to everything that the kalima encompasses and um, reject everything that um, conflicts with our kalima and we have to connect to our ulama, you know. In their bosoms, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed ilm, you know, the knowledge with which we gain the marifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
we recognize how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is through the teachings of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, you know, and I genuinely believe, I uh, hope that I'm wrong. Jazakallahu khayn wa ahsanu jaza. About this event unfolding, by the way, not anything else, but what, you know, my dreams, I hope it's just me being, having an overly active imagination and, um, it's not what I think it is. Anyway, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.